In this video, we are going to look at UV mapping and how texel density affects texture resolution. First, I'll discuss texel density and then we'll take a look at a practical example. Basically, we can look at texels as pixels inside of a texture. A texture is projected onto a 3D object through its UV coordinates. You can think of a UV's position information within the 0 to 1 space as the location of where the texture will be pinned to the geometry. The larger the UVs in the 0 to 1 space, the more pixels it can hold. This means more of the pixels in the texture will be used on the object. So here we have our object. And this object has two UV shells. So here I'll select this smaller UV shell, and here are the corresponding faces. Now I'll select the top shell, and again we can see the corresponding faces. Now, this object has this checker pattern applied to it, and let's imagine for a moment that these squares here in the texture represent the actual pixels. And so if we take a look at the UVs, we can see these selected UVs take a larger portion of the 0 to 1 texture space. And going back to our squares that we are pretending are actual pixels, we can see there are many squares on the object. Now, in contrast, let's look at this second, smaller UV shell. It is much smaller in the 0 to 1 texture space, and thus, these UV positions equate to a smaller portion of the texture being applied to the object. Essentially, this section of the object is getting far fewer pixels. This equates to a lower resolution. Notice that the squares are much larger and fewer when compared to the pixels allocated by the first UV shell. So here we have our object in Painter, and I want to demonstrate how this textile density can affect resolution. So here I have an alpha stamp that I'm going to place here on the object. So here I'm just going to stamp this image down, and notice that on the larger UV shell, as we discussed, we've allocated more pixels from the texture map we're creating to the object. Notice that the texture looks very crisp and sharp and clear. Now let's do the same thing on the other side which represents this smaller UV shell. So here I'll just increase my brush size and let's just stamp this down. And so here we can see the difference. Notice how under the same texture resolution, here I'm set to 2048, we get a complete discrepancy in the clarity of our texture purely based on the texel density we have assigned. So again, here on the smaller UV shell, we get a very poor low resolution result. The reason being is that the texel density of this second UV shell is very low and thus we cannot adequately provide enough pixels for this resolution so that this texture will look sharp and clear. Another way to look at it, here in our 2D view, we see the 0 to 1 space and we know that this represents, in our case, this 2K texture. So if I zoom in, you can see that the first stroke that we placed, you can see the amount of pixels that were covered. However, in the second UV, you can see that we're only allocating a very small amount of pixels within this 2K image. Again, this produces this very low resolution result. So we've discussed how texel density can affect texture resolution. However, it's also important to have a balance of texel density within an object. So here we have our object, and the UVs of this object, as you see here, are assigned to the same texture set. However, we have a problem in that within this single object, we have a mix of different texel densities. And this means that when we apply our texture, it's going to look good in some areas and poorly in others. A good example of this difference in density can be seen within this mesh part and this mesh part. So these two objects are very close to each other. However, their UV layouts are providing two different texel densities. Notice that this part is a much lower density than this part. When the texture is applied with these objects so close together, you're going to see a huge discrepancy in the texture resolution. Another example is the handle that we have here. So this handle, when we kind of back out on the mesh itself, you can see that it's a smaller mesh part and it's not nearly as visible as this part that we see here. However, if we take a look, this handle has a much larger texel density than this object as well. It also has a much larger density than this mesh part, which is the biggest mesh part of the entire object. 
Here in Painter, we can see the discrepancy in resolution caused by the differences in the texel density. Here we can see the object with a balanced texel density. Notice that the squares of the checker pattern are uniform across all mesh parts. The UVs have been scaled in relation to each other so that they provide a correct and uniform texel density. The larger mesh parts will need to have a greater texel density and mesh parts that are smaller or perhaps will not be as visible in game will have a lower density. For example, as you can see with the handle. Back in Painter, we can see the same material applied with the appropriate texel density. Notice that the material now displays with a uniform resolution across all mesh parts. Texel density is important for creating optimized and efficient textures. It is controlled through the size ratio of UVs to polygon face. Larger mesh parts will need more density than smaller parts, and it's vital to make sure that an object's texel density is uniform. Now that we have discussed texel density and how it is controlled through the UV layout, I will now run through a practical example for the UV layout of a sci-fi crate. This is the object we will texture in the sci-fi crate project section. So the first thing I do is I assign a material and within this material's diffuse color channel, I place this kind of checker pattern. And so if we just kind of zoom in here, you can see that I've got just this checker pattern and I'm gonna use this to help me gauge UV distortion as well as my texel density. First, let's talk about UV distortion. So I'm going to select this face here and I'm just gonna hide everything else. And so we're only focused in on this. And let me just kind of zoom into this area of my UVs. Now I've unwrapped these UVs and here are the UVs that are associated with this selected face. Now with this checker pattern applied, if we kind of zoom in really close uh, here, let me just deselect this and we'll zoom in. Uh, you can see that the squares uh, here look like squares. They have a square aspect ratio and they all look very uniform. So here I'm going to come over to the UVs and I'm just going to take these guys. And I'm going to scale them. I'm just going to kind of squish them here so that the UVs become this rectangular shape. And so now if we look here in our 3D view, you can see that the square pattern, the squares have now become elongated or stretched. They no longer have that square aspect ratio. And what this is indicating is that we're getting this texture stretching or distortion, which is due to the UV layout that we have. Now a rule for this, you want the UV's aspect ratio and size to match that of the polygon that they represent. So here notice our polygon face is actually pretty much you know square aspect ratio it's not perfect square but you know it's close if we kind of look at it kind of zoomed out here in the 3d view however if we look at our uvs themselves you can see that the aspect ratio here for these uvs definitely does not match the shape of the polygon so if we fix this here and we get the uvs to match the overall kind of shape and aspect ratio here of the polygons themselves you can see that now we're back to having our checker pattern, we're back to having the squares uh, have the same aspect ratio and be uniform. And so what this indicates to us is that we get a, a nice mapping going on here and that uh, you know we're, we're not gonna have any distortion in this area, which means that we're going to get a nice clean result when we actually start to paint in Substance Painter. So again, we just wanna make sure that the UVs match the overall size and aspect ratio of the polygon itself. So now let's take a look at the texel density for this object. So here you can see that we have a huge discrepancy in pixel density. Here with this object, you can see that we have a lot more squares from our texture pattern. And then here we can see the squares are much larger. So again, that's just going to be a, a mix match here in texture resolution. And, and again, we see that very prominently here uh, with this UV shell versus this. And so the way that I kind of tackle that um, is I start with the most important, most visible area of the mesh. Now, like I said, during the texturing process, you know, I just kind of unwrap these guys and I just kind of use the entire, you know, UV editor as kind of like a scratch board. So I might start with, say, like this object, unwrap it, uh, and then just kind of move it out of the way. Uh, here are these pieces here. I would unwrap, uh, just make sure that I get, you know, a nice uh, distortion-free uh, map going on. Once I've done that, I uh, just kind of move everything out of the way. And so here, I'm just going to take these uh, UV shells and just kind of move them out of the way. Uh, and then I'm going to focus in on this area here. So the UV shells here, you can see they are uh, part of the faces that make up the largest surface area of this object.
And so this is where we want to allocate more of the pixel information or pixel data from the texture. And so I've got these guys unwrapped, and what I'll do is I'll start uh, by you know making sure that this kind of fills most of the zero to one space. Uh, again, this is the largest area of the object, and so it's going to need uh, most of the pixel information. And so now that I have this set, uh, you can see here the size of the uh, checker pattern. And what I want to do is I want to just try to visually match this size here with the other UV shells. Let's start with this guy. So we'll just double click the face here to select the UV shell. And I'll just drag in or just move this guy over here into my zero to one space. Um, and I will just start to just scale this guy. And here I'm just kind of eyeballing it, just looking at this until um, I get this to match uh, pretty closely. And so um, obviously, like so right here, you can see that you know uh, the squares are too small. So we're just going to scale this guy down until it just about matches. And here we go. That looks pretty uniform between these two different shells. And so with that, I have set the density on this shell to match the density of this shell, its neighboring shell. And so that means when we apply our texture, we're going to get the same result uh, across these two different uh, UV shells. And especially since these two guys are sitting right next to each other. If, let's say, this shell uh, was a different ratio, so right here you could see that, well, more of the pixels are going to be allocated here. So if we looked at the object, if we looked at the texture applied to this object, in this area, the texture would look, you know, more sharp. And then right here, the text would look very blurry because, you know, or blurrier than this area because uh, of the texel density differences. And we definitely want to avoid stuff like that. So that, again, that's why it's very important to make sure that the texel density is uniform um, across all of the UV shells within our layout. And so now I kind of have that in place. And like I said, you can just, you know, work it this way, this manual process. It doesn't take long. Just kind of just eyeball and scale these guys together. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it just has to be, you know, close enough. And so here, here's another one that I could work with. So um, just to kind of demonstrate this again, here I just need to scale this guy down. It's just a matter of resizing the shell so that its density will match its neighboring UV shells. Now most 3D applications are going to have like a layout tool that you can use. And so here in Maya we have one and I'll just show you what that does. So if we come over here to the layout tool and I'm just going to go to the options, there's this option here for prescale. And by default it's set to none. Uh, but what I'm going to do is set this to world and I'm going to automatically prescale all of these UV shells. So let me just come into here and just select all these guys. And I'm going to utilize this prescale function. Now another thing that I have uh, that I'm going to turn off it, when you're using a layout function like this is a rotate. I'm setting this to none. And like I said, most 3D applications are going to have some type of layout function like this. For instance, Modo has one as well, uh, which they call pack UVs. And they have a stretch function. And they also have an orient function, which is similar to rotate here. So you can utilize you know, something similar to what I'm doing here with inside of Modo, or like I said, most any other 3D application as well. So here I'm just going to hit Apply. And we'll close, and you can see what that's done here. Uh, let me just go back to my UVs. It's uh, just prescaled all of the UVs and basically packed them into this zero to one spot. And the result of that is a very, very quick way to set our texel density. So now, as I look, uh, you know, just kind of survey the the actual object here, you can see that you know all of the squares uh, are basically the same aspect ratio as well as size here on our object. So this means that we have a very uniform texel density. And again, it's very important to understand that this texel density is being assigned uh, per this size of the object. Because like I said, you know, we have, you know, the, this is the main object surface area. It's going to get mapped most of the pixels from the texture. This object here, it's a bit smaller. Notice that it's a little smaller here in our UV space. So it's going to get a little less texel density, but still it's going to be enough and it's going to be even as we can see here by our checker pattern. Finally, we have here our handle. Let's take a look at our handle. Notice our handle. This is this object is much smaller than this object. Let me select this guy. So our handle here is much smaller than this. Uh, and here in our uh, zero to one space, you can see that the UVs that represent uh, that object here, uh, they have an even smaller texel density as well. And so we have this kind of hierarchical order of objects to where the larger object has the most density, and then the smaller objects have the least amount of density.
Now, one last thing that I want to cover in this video is about the orientation of the UVs. Now, what I try to do uh, when I'm creating a, a layout for my UVs is I try to keep all of the shells oriented in the same direction. So for instance, uh, if we look at the UVs here uh, for you know this front part here of our object. So this is the front part, uh, and this here is the back part. I've basically kept these two shells in this kind of horizontal orientation. Uh, same thing here uh, with this kind of bottom object piece here. You can see that it kind of has this horizontal orientation. Uh, this piece as well, even my handles. So if we take a look at our handles here, uh, you can see that it has this horizontal orientation uh, and the UVs do as well. So everybody's kind of matching this horizontal orientation. And that's important because when you're actually mapping your textures and you're utilizing noises and such, uh, you can help to avoid seams being very visible on your object. Now, if you're in Substance Painter, on a fill layer, you can utilize a triplanar projection, which will project a noise in world space, utilizing a position in a world space normal map, and you know can remove seams and such. But you don't have the ability to utilize triplanar projection in the mass generators. So making sure that your UVs kind of follow within the same orientation will help you to hide any of these seams. So depending on you know how closely you're trying to you know pack your UVs, and you may have an object that has so many you know parts and shells that you know you're going to have to you know take different uh, shells and, and, and rotate. And, and try to position them in, in, in certain locations so that you can really pack everything together. And so keeping everything kind of in the, you know, this uniform orientation may not be possible, but it's just something to think about, you know, when you're working on your layout. And in the case of this object here, it, it's simple enough that I can do that. So here I just left everything kind of in this kind of horizontal orientation. Again, just to kind of help uh, with, with seams that can arise. So that's going to wrap up this video on UV layout. Uh, the, the biggest takeaway from this is to make sure that the UV's size and aspect ratio match the polygon that they correspond to. Also, you want to make sure that you scale your UV shells in a way that you know they provide a very even distribution of pixels from the texture. And you want to make sure that you start with the largest shapes and set their density first in the zero to one space, uh, and then kind of fill in the smaller object as you go. And finally, if possible, just try to make sure that the UV shells have the same orientation.